G'day guys, this album here, something I picked up last year, again this was 50 cents, I remember I was quite surprised when I saw when I found this, uh, because uh, this is, if you can't see there, uh, the black metal, I guess nowadays more Viking metal band, Enslaved, and uh, <clears throat> black metal bands, I guess death metal bands too, are famous for... Um, for their symbols, their their I don't know what you call it, you know, their logos or their, 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 the way their names are written. Often it's very hard to decipher exactly what it says. Uh, so yeah, E E N S L A V E D Enslaved. They actually have a different logo now. The more recent albums, Enslaved. Yeah, like I said, is a Norwegian black metal uh, second wave black metal. I guess second wave ish. Um, that have evolved into a more Viking metal sound nowadays. Um, progressive black metal, maybe you'd also say. And this is their very first album. Um, is it Vini? I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Uh, it's it's in the Norwegian language, but it's like Viking Leveldi. Viking Leveldi. And. Um, this was released in 1994 on the uh, Death Like Silence Productions label, which was Euronymous, the uh, guitarist from Mayhem, who was subsequent or subsequently, he was killed by uh, Varg Vikernes from Burzum. But I'm sure we've all heard that story before. It's movies made about it and books written about it and uh, plenty of um, in-depth accounts about it if you want to find out about it. But these guys were, were one of the few bands on Death Like Silence um, label because, you know, the guy passed away before, uh, before he could get um, many releases. And it says on here, uh, anti Mosh. That was like the, um, I don't know what they call that. The, some, some labels use a phrase or a word for that numbering of the releases. Like uh, I guess the other fa famous one is uh, Trent Reznor's Nothing Records. Although, no, it's all just his releases. It's not just the ones on Nothing Records because the ones on um, his uh First album release, what was that? Uh, Pretty Hate Machine was on TRT and that TVT, TRT, not TRT, TVT, whatever. It wasn't on Nothing, nothing Records and I'm pretty sure that that's a, a Halo, a, numbers from Halo, Halo 001 all the way up to whatever it is now in the most recent releases. Everything is, is numbered as a Halo something. Well, with this guy's record label, it's labeled as Anti Mosh and this is Anti Mosh 008. This was made at a time when, uh, I guess, black metal was at one of its peaks. So um, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, these bands came out of Norway and kind of made a sound of their own. And the bands we usually associate with that, especially that the beginning of that kind of movement was is Mayhem. Um, uh, Burzum, um, Emperor, I guess, Immortal, although the, you, some people, there's a lot of a, kind of a gatekeeping and, and infighting over what, what is true black metal and what is not. But these guys, um, I think, were part of that, at least the tail end of that first wave. Um, that's on the back, isn't it? The members there, uh, the singer bassist in the middle, his name was that was a Gertel Kittel. Again, I'm I, I can't pronounce Norwegian, although actually I have studied a little bit of Norwegian. You know, Norwegian is is a very not very, but it is a close relative of the English language, and so learning Norwegian is actually not that hard as far as languages go. It's one of, for for English speakers, it's one of the easier ones. And a few years ago, I kind of spent a few months studying it and practicing it and um 
However, uh, my memory's not remaining to be able to pronounce things properly. But anyway, it's Grutul Kjelsson, the main vocalist and the uh, bass player. And then I think that guy there on the right is Ivar Bjornsson. And they were both pretty young when they were signed. I think I read that he was 13 years old when they, um, when they put the band together. And the guy there on the left, I'm not sure, sure who is that, who is that? Trim, oh, Trim Thorson, the drummer. He's not the drummer anymore. Trim, he, he was in a few other bands. He was an emperor after um, Faust was arrested for murder. Um, I think he played an emperor for a while and a few other kind of Norwegian uh, black metal-ish bands as well. But anyway, this album, it, it's not bad. To be honest, I, black metal, I can take or leave. What I find with most black metal you listen to is that this song, this one in particular, has got quite long songs. The songs are often over 10 minutes long. Um, and what you'll find is oh, as you're listening to the song, there are some good riffs. And you know, it's a good riff, but it's just lost in the other nine minutes of meandering, repetitive riffs, fast tremolo picking. And it... Um, it kind of doesn't make the impact, but I guess, you know, that, that that's meant to be the whole ethos of black metal, isn't it? Is that is a, is a rebellion against whatever else, or well, at least that's what some people think, but that just kind of sometimes makes uh, shit music. But no, this is not a, a shit album. This is, this is album that's got its moments, but the thing that most interests me about the album is that the, you can hear how much they've evolved since this album, because more modern stuff by Enslaved, I like. A lot more than this um you can see some other pictures there that guy there at Ivor, he's still the guitarist now he looks kind of funny guy's got a sword um they really went for the viking aesthetic and especially as the um as the albums went on they really embraced it you know the singing in, in old norse and icelandic and um talking singing about Viking tales of uh, raids on uh, Lindisfarne and whatnot. But, uh, oh, there we go. There's this some. These are Viking La Veldi's lyrics in the original language, Icelandic. I guess that's Icelandic. It's sick track four, which is an ancient Norwegian. We wish to give our hails to Mr. Sigvalda Thorlaxen, who kindly shared his knowledge and wisdom with us. Icelandic lyrics are translated and edited to the frosty and blah, blah, blah. This album is also dedicated to the memory of um, Euronymous. Oystein Asareth, I think that's how you pronounce it. Down here. This album, to its full extent, dedicated to Oystein Arseth, 1968 and 1993. Now, another... Shit, I just dropped it. Uh... Another interesting thing is that apparently this album is quite difficult to come by, but there, oh damn it, there are uh, various reprints, and some of them are bootlegged and not, um, not authorized, but I, it's hard to find what's what. Looking at this album, looking at the condition of it, and um, this doesn't look like this is a 1994 pressing. But I could be wrong. I looked it up on Discographies. You know, on Discogra uh, was it called Discographies? The, the website or app I have on my phone where you can um, scan the barcode on the, on the CD and it will you know, show you what it's registered in. And this is registered as a, a 1994 Norwegian repressing. But I don't know if that's true. Regardless, they... It's not a, a, a common album, and it's actually quite valuable. And um, the the one that, if you just look on the website, Discogs, sorry, that's where it was, Discogs.com, it's got a highest selling of $200. That $200 New Zealand, so about $100-ish American. This one's average was averaged out at about uh, 60 New Zealand dollars. So um, not that I'm planning to resell it, I don't really resell any CDs, but um, yeah, I I guess a lot of the, that, the black metal stuff did have very limited runs. 
a lot of it was made on released on vinyl and cassette only back in the 90s and a lot of them were signed to uh, kind of little tiny labels and things got lost in the mix and there's been repressings and unauthorized repressings of, and releases and whatnot so it's um it's not a clear-cut thing but uh, this is what it is and um yeah i would recommend enslaved's albums more about uh, you know 10 years after this especially from uh Monumention onwards. Not Monumention was two thousand one. From there, I think they kind of you could hear they they shifted gears, and they kind of opened up to more varied sounds. And then Below the Lights in particular is a is an excellent album. And you know, there's a there's a song on the um, what's the Havenless? I guess a lot of people know because it was used in a documentary about heavy metal. But there's another song on there called The Crossing, one of my favorite um enslaved songs they're still going to they're still still uh releasing stuff right up through the 2000s till this year heimdall i think is coming out this year it hasn't been released yet but it's soon to be released they did a really good series of um uh recorded performances during covid lockdown they released you can find them on youtube they did a, again a really good one of the crossing so um an interesting band the way that they've uh they've kind of evolved a lot of those those bands that came out of Norway in, in the 90s kind of went in two different directions. Some kind of clung to to the sound or to the um, you know the lo-fi approach, I guess, like Dark Throne. You know, not that they're stuck to dick uh, to black metal; they've gone in other directions, but they really haven't evolved much out of that metal sound. Whereas others like Enslaved or uh, Oliver, Oliver. In particular, have completely changed. Nothing like a black metal band anymore. Emperor, you know, oh, well, I shouldn't say Emperor. Uh, Isan, Isan from Emperor. I really like his solo stuff. He he kind of embraces so many diff different kinds of music. Emperor coming to New Zealand actually in May, and I'm I'm I would actually prefer to see Isan do his solo stuff, but um, I'll probably be going to that concert. Anyway, thank you for watching.